It's Mel here from Top Notch Teaching and today I'm really excited because I want to share with you my latest ebook. It's called the Bumper Ga Bunk Oh, excuse me. It's called The Bumper Book of Fun Math Games and Activities. And to me, this book has been an absolute lifesaver. I use this book all the time when I want to come up with some ideas for teaching math, whether it's to do with number work or whether it's to do with space and shape or chance and data. The book is jam-packed full of awesome ideas. But you know, sometimes when you see something and you're like, well, I don't know if it's really for me and oh, I'd really like to have a look inside. Well, guess what? Today you get to look inside my bumper book. So I'm going to just take you through the book, show you each of the sections in the book and also then show you how to play some of the games and the activities as well. So let's get straight into it. Here we are with the bumper book of fun math games and activities. So I'm just going to take you through the book just to show you the different sections so you can get a feel for what's included. You'll notice that I've bound the book. I have a binding machine and I like to bind all of my resources so that they fit on my shelves nice and easy and they're easy to go and grab. Uh, when you get yourself one of these books though, it will come to you as an electronic copy. So you'll get a PDF of the book and then that way you're able to print it out if you want to and bind it or you've got each sheet to print out on an as needs basis. So let's have a look at what's included. So you'll notice there's the table of contents which sort of lists all the main math areas that are covered in the book. So we've got a section on number. So there's lots of different activities um, in the number section. Then we've got a section on mental math and some of the different mental math strategies. There's also a section on space and lots of different activities to help your kids learn about the different aspects of space. We've also got measurement and the final section is the book. In the book is chance and data as well. So let's go back to our number section and the first activity I want to show you is the 100 charts puzzles. These are an absolutely fantastic way to help kids with the ordering of numbers and counting. And you'll notice in the book I've included hundreds charts for a 0 to 99, a 1 to 100 and also a 1 to 120. So there's a few different options there and especially for those kids who have trouble getting past the 100 barrier and what comes next, the 1 to 120 chart is good. You can do this in the standard way where you just print the sheet, you cut all the bits out and then the children are required to put it back in order um, and just stick it down as they go. But what I like to do is, and this is great for if you've got math rotations or stations or something like that that is happening, is I like to actually put on the back of each of the bits once they're cut apart little magnetic strips and that way you can use either a whiteboard or a tray or some other sort of uh, magnetic surface uh, that the puzzles can stick to so that they are easy to move around and they don't get out of order. So again, it's the same thing. You get your students to pop them in the order that they go, practicing their counting skills. Um, and what's great about the magnetic strips is obviously they don't fall off either, which is always a bonus. <laughs> And then what I do is I've just got little Ziploc bags that are um, I keep the bits in and then I'll put on the bag whether it's a 0 to 99 or a 1 to 120 just so that it's easy to keep track of. But this is a really good way to um, get kids practicing um, on their own and using it for a station or a rotation or something like that. All right, next up. Uh, I haven't, I couldn't find my times tables booklets, but I did want to just show this section because this has probably been one of the most popular uh, ideas that I've ever come across, and I just think it's such a great little way for kids to practice their um, times tables or their multiplication facts. That's a little bit different from the usual um, just drill and practice. So the book gives you detailed instructions and photos of how to make a times table booklet, which is pretty cool. The next section we've got is mental math and I just wanted to show you some of the uh, posters. So there's five different mental math skills that are looked at in the book and with most of them you get a poster which explains the mental math strategy. 
such as these ones but you also get some games and activities as well so as you can see with the compatible numbers strategy there's some instructions on how to do an activity how you can adapt it and also some games that you can play so that's really good for getting your kids um, good at uh, mental maths and developing those skills as well all right the next one we're going to have a look at is my transformation puzzles so if you're doing a bit of work on space and you'd like to help your students visualize how things look when they're moved around then these are a really great little activity that you can try with them and in the book you've got about four or five different worksheets so you can give different ones to different children as well but pretty much how they work is you cut out the little shape at the bottom of the page and then they trace around the animal in one cell and then they need to move the animal to cell number two by either translating, rotating or reflecting it. So in this instance we're going to turn it a quarter turn to the right and I'm going to trace around it. And then we're going to reflect it right and then I'm going to trace around it. Then we're going to do a rotate a quarter turn to the left and again so each time you're moving it along and then your students write the instructions down the right hand side and a really fun thing to do at the end is to swap it the instructions and then see if the students come up with the same sequence of movements as the person who originally made it so it's a really good way to help kids see um, how you can transform shapes and animals um, it hasn't actually changed the original shape but how it um, can move from one cell to the next. The next thing that I've got to show you are the 2D shape domino, dominoes and these are a great way to help kids with 2D shapes and the properties of 2D shapes as well. So you'll notice in the book you've got a heap of different domino cards and you might need to do photocopy these on hard card maybe three or four sets so that you've got enough to play in a small group. I use thick cards so when they're turned over you can't really see through which is much better and you could also do this as a matching game whereas you cut out each individual square and it's a little bit like concentration where you all put them out and then if you turn two cards over and they're the same the students get to keep them but if you want to play it as a dominoes game you would give each student five cards and they get to look at their cards and then one student would put theirs down and if they've got either a circle or an octagon or something that can go to that they can put it there if they can't go then they would pick up a card and then the first person to get rid of their cards all laid down is the winner so let me just show you so I'm going to pop this one down and I've got a triangle so I can do this three straight sides that are not always equal and what have, else have I got there oh I've got another triangle so if it was my turn again I might be able to go up here and then you would keep going until um, the first person to get rid of all of their cards is the winner there's lots of different activities and ideas that you can do with the dominoes so if you come up with a different way of using them I'd love to hear about it all right, next we're going to move on to measurement and I've also included a heap of task cards for time and also for um, measurement and area. So the first ones are the time task cards. So these ones are getting your students to practice reading the clock face and writing the time in. There's also getting your students to write the time in different ways so that they learn all the different ways that we can say the time and write it. Um, you've also got your students then drawing in the hands of the time to show the different times half past two and quarter to twelve uh, so there's lots of different cards there for your students to practice time and then if we have a look at the next one we've got area task cards as well so it's a great way to get your students to review area so in this one they're coloring the smallest area blue and the largest area green then it, some of the cards require your students to draw shapes with a certain um, number of square units. Uh, you've also got two different shapes they have to draw with the same area. And this one they need to find out what the area of the shape is and then they need to draw a different shape um, but all, that also has the same area. So you'll find there's quite a few different cards there for getting your students to practice area. 
Alright, and the last little thing I just wanted to show you is at the back of the ebook, there's also a section for math games. So when you get the PDF, each of these orange links will go to a website that's got some great uh, math games that you can also add to your repertoire of teaching strategies to help your kids with their math skills so um, yeah and you just click on those and they're sorted into junior appropriate games for junior primary middle primary or upper primary as well so I hope that's given you a bit more of an idea about the bumper book of fun math games and activities uh, I'll pop a link to where you can um, have a look at this in more detail and thanks so much for watching bye